All right, so you've come to the end of class. So what, we're going to give a final exam in this class, but part, half of it's going to be a take-home. So I want to describe sort of the intricacies. The take-home is going to require a little bit um, extra knowledge from what you've learned in class. So I want to give you a little background knowledge on this. So we looked at this in the last class. Um, this is the Demolver Power and Lighter DPL cents per kilowatt hour. And um, we, we talked about why there's different peaks when there are and whatnot. So what we're really going to talk about in this class is, or in this, um, you know, overview of the final, is that some buildings are charged using this hourly rate. And so the final is going to be based on, on a little bit of that. So let's look at um, sort of an example of how these buildings are charged using the hourly rate. So this is an example of hourly price service. So they're charged using the hourly rate we saw uh, in the last slide in the visual. So they have a couple different charges. Um, some of the charges should look familiar, the top charges, the delivery charges. All those are, are similar to what um, we've done before. We haven't talked about the RARM charge, and we're not going to be able to cover it, unfortunately. But all the other charges should look very familiar as to what we've done before. So supply charges are what's different. And this is the hourly price service charges. And they sort of hide what's going on here. So the tr transmission capacity charge, they don't really hide. Um, that's just a charge for how many ki peak kilowatts you're using. Um, and, and, you know, a dollar per kilowatt amount. So, and then, but the capacity and energy charge are a little obscure. So the energy charge is um, a charge for those time of use prices that we saw. So that's the, um, you know, the big one. The, um, the energy charge is um, multiple, basically for each hour of the year you or, or of a given month, you have a given energy charge, a time of use price, and you multiply that by how much the building used during that hour. And you'll see an example of, of how we get that um, when I go over the Excel template. But so this is just in one line here, and unfortunately, in this bill, you can't really see when you're being charged and what the prices are and whatnot. So it takes a little more investigating, and that's why I had to investigate a little more to get the chart on the last slide. So what we're going to do is for the final is you guys are going to basically investigate the following question. What would the charges be if this elementary school was on hourly price service? So let's look at both of these um, sort of ideas here. We can tell this is sort of a school because the, um, the kilowatt hour usage goes down during the summer. And we can also see weekends. So those little lines in the middle are weekends. And what happens is, is that at really peak times here in the top graph, school might not be in session. And that's in the bottom graph. So this is really powerful. We can we can use we can see if the school in June, which we're going to look at, will be better better off um, using this time of use rate than if not using this time of use rate. So the other question we're going to answer too is okay. So now we'll look we ha we're on a time of use rate. So let's throw an electric vehicle into the mix. And so I want to talk a little bit about a special kind of electric vehicle called grid integrated vehicles. So what grid integrated vehicles are, and these are the vehicles that are um, plugged in here. What grid integrated vehicles are is they can both be charged from the grid, so they can take power from the grid to charge their electric batteries. Or, unlike a regular electric car, they can also send power back to the grid. And that's why there's dual arrows here. So what you guys are going to figure out is, and this is a actually active research question going on at the University of Delaware as well that hasn't been published yet, is what effect do these time of use prices have on when you should charge and discharge your cars? So I'll say that one more time. What effect of the time of use prices have of when you should charge and discharge your cars? So you're going to be exploring different... Um, charging and discharging times and figuring out 
what effect that has on um, your utility bills. So a reference for in the in the um, research literature is down here. And what these guys did is they didn't use time of use prices. They actually used a flat rate of 10 cents a kilowatt hour when um, calculating um, this revenue. So you guys are going to sort of do a little project to expand um, the research. And this is something that if you were to do a little more work on and make, you'll see the model that I, I created isn't perfect. But if you were to create a little bit more, you might be able to write a paper and get it published in a scientific journal. So like I said, the final exam is going to be two parts. The take home is going to um, use data for the month of um, June, actually. Uh, I messed up there. And calculate the cost with and without a um, gridded and integrated vehicle, so an electric vehicle that can send power both ways. And then, like I said, you're going to adjust the parameters of the GIV model to try to get more cost reduction. And there's going to be a handout provided for more details, so don't worry. We'll go over that more. And there's also going to be an Excel template um, with uh, most of the model things filled out already for you. So in class, um, the in class final is going to be mostly qualitative questions. Um, think about the first couple on the midterm. Um, and, and it's going to be very few calculations. There might be a few, but there will be very few and far between. So, and then the, um, if you to study for the in class, study concepts instead of calculations. So look back at the questions on all the tasks that I asked you, and look back on the questions and the quizzes I asked you. Okay, so the next part of this video is going to go over the Excel template. Okay, so now that we've gone over a little bit of the overview of what's going on, I want to show you the Excel spreadsheet that um, I'll be giving to you. And actually, this one is one with uh, the solutions already filled out. So I'm not going to give you this one. I'm going to give you one with uh, a bunch of these things erased, and you'll have to fill them out. But I will give you a PDF file of this one so you can... Um, make sure that your calculations are correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and just look at some things. The first thing I want to point out is if we look at the utility bill, there's a bunch of these charges up, up top in the, in the red section. I already filled those in for you. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different is that the RARM charge we're going to get rid of because they wouldn't um, an elementary school like this wouldn't actually be charged this. So we're just going to um, zero that out. But all the other ones are just copied directly from the bill. Uh, the only thing I want to point out is that this capacity charge is not going to be exactly correct if you if uh, if the utility company was charging this, but it's going to be close enough um, for our, for our uh, things. So um, just keep that as at, at that point. So the other thing is the school that's actually charged... Um, Three thousand six hundred seven dollars on this bill uh, um, when they when they actually used it. So we'll, we'll see how our, our time of use prices um, go into that. And here's the variables that I'm going to have you change. So the number of cars, so you can have more than one vehicle. Um, the time that the charge begins. So this is going to be military time. So this would be 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. So time time beginning of the charge and time the end of the charge. And the time when the, we discharge to the time we end the discharge. So this is 2 a.m. to 7 p.m. So this is just a very simple, uh, simple model because obviously we could, um, you know, go going back and forth between charging and discharging during the day, and that's not what's happening here. So that's what's sort of going on here. So let's 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 we can change these values and everything else is going to change. But first, let's dig into what other calculations that you're going to have to do. So again, the costs I want you to do are for June. And we're going to have to fill in these these categories. These are, This is going to be empty when I give you this sheet. But the nice part is I already have the model for you. So under the um, V2G model, or the vehicle, the grid, same, same thing as a uh, grid integrated vehicle. Um, there's a lot of cells that are red, so that means you don't. I don't want you to touch those red cells because those are the model that I filled in. Um, and actually, I'm going to make these red too. I don't want you to touch these cells either. The cells you're going to fill out, and let's just take a look at all these. This is day of the year, date, time, month, day of the week, number of 15-minute intervals, all that stuff you've seen before. Here's the energy used in the building. So this is the the data of all the energy used in the building. Average power draw of the building. 
which is um, in kilowatts instead of kilowatt hours. Um, how much battery state of charge is just how much electricity is stored in the battery at any given time. This is whether we're charging or discharging, or if we're not having any change in the battery, and that's that's that. Um, and then this is the energy into and out of the battery. And then now that we know that, this is the energy used in the building after um, the grid integrated vehicle is taken into account. So this is with just pretending that we have no grid integrated vehicle at all. And this is if we have that electric vehicle that's both charging and discharging um, at different times. So we can sort of see, um, for example, this this row, the energy used in the building is 9.71, and we're getting energy out of the battery. So it's 7.21 here. So um, we're using less energy in the building. And then if we um, look down a little further, um, So if we look down, let's say, at row 100, the energy in the building here, let's go back, let me make sure. Yeah, so it's G and M. The energy in the building here is 8.63, and we're using 11.13 with the grid energy vehicle. That's because we're charging in this place. So when we're using a grid energy vehicle, we are just shifting the energy from the times when we're um, discharging to charging. So if you think about it, basically we use the same amount of electricity. The building is going to use the same amount of electricity. It's just the time that it uses it is going to be different. Okay. So the rows you're going to, or the columns you're going to have to fill in, are the energy charges with no grid integrated vehicle and the energy charges with grid integrated vehicle. And this should be a relatively simple calculation because I give you the energy in both cases. So in these two columns, G and M, and I give you the um, Delmarva Power and Light energy cost. So remember, it's just you just multiply those two to get the energy charges, and you can see what the answer is for, for this case. So you can you can check yourself um, to make sure that you get those same answers. Okay, so now let's go back to um, the cost calculation. So what you're gonna have to do is using that model sheet, you're gonna have to fill in all of these costs. So the time of use energy costs charges are the energy charges from the, the only energy charges from the model. All these other charges are going to come from the total kilowatt hours used, the peak kilowatt, and all of these things. Okay? And then the total charges, you, um, you just add those up. The only other calculation I'm going to make you do is the cost difference between the grid integrated vehicle case and they're having no grid integrated vehicles. So you can see right now, it's actually worse off if you, um, it's more expensive if you charge and discharge on this cycle. So let me show you how that can change. Let's say instead of, um, you know, beginning discharge at 2 a.m., I begin at uh, 1 p.m. So that's going to change and we're going to have a net benefit there. Okay, so you're going to play around with those to see what happens. Let me just go ahead and undo that back. Okay, and you're going to have to think about what's going on and why it's going on. Okay, so that now you have an overview of the template. Again, I'll give you this um, template, but it won't be all filled in. Um, and there you go. Good luck on the final.